Hey guys, it's Elizabeth of ERWClans.com. Today I'm going to be doing an extra long video, more so than usual, because today we're going to be setting up the back pages for my 2020 Passion Planner. Our tools that I'll be using today, we have T-Square, Slice Tool, I have a Micron Pen, I also have a series up here of the um, Tri Plus Fine Liners. I also have the uh, collapsible ruler here. And then in this box that used to hold sticker paper, I have all of my back page stickers pre printed and ready to go and in order. Uh, that's really important for me. I like to keep everything in order before I get to actually stickering in my planner. Um, so, what I did was figured out what I wanted to use each of the 40 total pages in the back of the planner for in advance. Once I had that figured out, I went ahead and ordered or printed everything for my back pages. So then once I had everything set up um, with all my stickers, I put them into order, uh, made a list, checked it twice. It is the holiday season. And now I'm ready to go. So... Um, basically, to set up your planner pages, which is going to be the first part, we're going to sticker everything. You're just going to grab your stickers from wherever you got them. Uh, this is the modified Level 10 Life Goals from Chelsea Brown's store. Um, I forget what her sticker has in place here, but I put this wheel in last year, and I really love having that in there, so I put it back in this year. Um, but yeah, essentially, just grab your sticker. If, you, if you're printing your own out on like the Avery paper, just a bit of advice, uh, you can peel the little triangle back, start stickering, and then sticker flat. Otherwise, that's where we're gonna have our T-square come in. We can just use that to push it down nice and smooth so we don't get any bubbling. These are the stickers. Uh, this is printed using a template that's in that um, I use for all of the stickers that I have in my store. So it has less than a centimeter. I think it's like God, two or three millimeters on each side difference. So there you go. If you don't use the Avery paper, you know, for example, you're buying stickers, full page stickers from my store, buying full page stickers from Chelsea's store. Uh, what you can do is start to peel at the top like so. So remember, Chelsea stickers not repositionable. Mine that come from my store, you might be able to reposition once, but they're technically also not removable. Just bring that out. So you see I peeled it back and folded it. Now I can kind of work on making sure everything's lined up before I put it down. Then once I know that everything is lined up, I can smooth down the top. Once the top is smoothed down, you can fold the sticker back, start peeling this page. And just like I've shown you in like a bunch of other videos before, push it down and just keep pushing. It's hard to see. So I'll just kind of show you there. So you can see how I'm doing that to keep it smooth. I did wrinkle the page a little bit because I didn't push down enough because I was trying to show you guys how we're doing this, okay? There we go. If you end up with a wrinkle on a back page like this, there's a couple things you can do. You can use a bone scoring tool to push that about as flat as possible. You can also, because this is just basically a pressure point in the paper, you can grab your slice tool and you can score up the middle here, okay? So that will also alleviate the pressure from this where it's bent, if that makes sense to you. Um, so I'll show you both ways, really. I do that. Up this seam here, like so. And then I can just have these pages overlap so I won't have this kind of hard ridge there, okay? Because we want to be able to write on these pages. 
What you can also do is take your bone scorer tool and just flatten it out, but like I said, that will create that ridge there. So if you don't want the ridge, grab your slice tool so that you can kind of just let the paper naturally overlap. And then go over it with the bone scorer tool. That'll flatten out your crease there. Okay? So that's how we fix any creases if you get creases. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue stickering based on my plan. Um, so I'm just going to keep going. For horizontal stickers, I like to, if I possibly can, put them here next to a seam or something like that where there is the top of it is with the seam I feel like this makes a lot more sense and then they're always going in the same direction so if I need to look at utilize a page that has a horizontal sticker on it I will always just turn a page towards me okay. and then I can go on to the other side it up and stick it down. If you don't have a T-square, you can use a regular ruler. That's why I have my Midori ruler here. And just use that to kind of push it down to keep the creases down. You can't even tell that we had that problem underneath of it. Cool. Let's keep going. Um, if you get when you get to these back pages, one of the things that you might run into is that the back pages kind of bubble up a bit, which can cause some of the bubbling on the back of it, like we saw earlier. So what you can do is clip the page down, just clip the teeny tiny little corner there. That'll keep the page flat when you're laying out your sticker. So then you don't have to worry so much. If you are concerned, as I sometimes am, about all your stickers lining up evenly with each other at the top of every sticker being aligned, you can also just use a pencil to make a mark going across, measure out, you know, all of my stickers will start from this top portion of the paper and then kind of go from there. Otherwise you can just kind of lay it down as you go as you go if you need to. Most of these stickers I've designed for myself just for my needs with um, running a photography business and also running a sticker making business. You can absolutely, however, you know, you can buy stickers. Like this one I kind of made myself in Photoshop. Placing these stickers down is kind of more of an art than a science at this point. Like. You'll notice sometimes all the tricks and techniques work. Sometimes I don't need to use the tricks and techniques and everything works beautifully and other times shit just goes wrong. And there's nothing we can really do about it. Just keep kind of pushing on. It's just something that you'll get with practice. Um, you might, you know, want to work from maybe the middle of your book forward and back or from the back of your book forward. If it's really going to bother you, do not have a perfect planner page, if that kind of makes sense. I feel like sometimes when I'm putting these stickers down, I'm not even breathing. These full page stickers are such little bastards sometimes. Here is, this is all going to be kind of hand drawn out. Um, but on the other hand, I don't want to forget what I'm putting on this page. So as I'm going through, I'm going to go ahead and put my headers on, even though I won't be drawing them in until later in this episode, because the first thing I want to do is get all of my sticker, my pages laid out, okay? All right, once we have all of our stickers in, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to mark the pages so that I can more easily find my um, indexes. Um, 
I had Chelsea do up a color-coded tab for me uh, so that the tabs actually coordinate with the level 10 life goals and then each that's also why if you look you'll see some of the pages are red some of them have yellow headers some of them are green that's because everything is going to coordinate to these sections here um, but when I ordered them I said I wanted monthly tabs instead of blank tabs so they have the months on them but you know what that's fine because a that's totally my bad I totally my fuck up on that one and More importantly, and more importantly, I don't really care what the tabs say as much as being able to see them when my book is like this. Uh, if you look, you can see I put the Teresa tabs in when I was setting up the front pages. But what I want to be able to see is my colors in my back pages. So what I'm going to go do, do is go through and put my colors in. Um, if you buy Chelsea's, you'll, you've seen me do this on some other videos as well, um, how I line the tabs up using a binder clip. I've also showed you, I think in last year's video, how you can use a pencil and this to line them up. Um, if you're using tabs for the monthly sections, you can just kind of line them up there. Um, but for this, I'm going to line them up here based on how my uh, tabs worked out. This year, how my pages worked out, I'm going to be lining them up on the left side of each page. So, um, real quick to just kind of go over that, I line it up here at the top. Okay, clip it down, grab my tab, make sure that's nicely lined up. Make sure I've only grabbed one page. Line up my tabs, make sure you've got them bent in half, and then just kind of smush them down. Um, these tabs that I have here are the um, flush mount tabs. So when you smush them down and you push them against the edge, they should go all the way to the edge and be flush like that, if you can kind of see there. Um, if you want the kind that stick out, don't order the flush mounts. So that's my red section, which is everything to do with my business. So I'm going to go through all my pages and I'm going to skip anything that's red. Go to my orange page or my first orange spread. Put this in here. Make sure that's flush with the top there. Fold my tab in half. Line it up and stick it down. All right. I'm going to just keep doing that for the rest of my colors. Other things that you can do if you don't want to invest in getting yourself a set of, tab of custom tabs from Chelsea's store, um, you can always do washi tape along the edges. Um, or you can add multiple bookmarks. If you only have like, let's say three or four color sections, multiple bookmarks, you could add three or four bookmarks in those colors. And then just make sure you keep those at the front pages of each color section. Um, if you want to add a bookmark, there is a video on my YouTube page for adding a bookmark. So check that video out. If you're going to go with the tabs like I'm doing, always make sure before you tab down that you check to make sure you're not tabbing together multiple pages. And now there's the rainbow side so that you can see if I want to go to a particular section. Based on my color coding, I can know, okay, well, my light green is my sticker business, so I can open right on up there. So once we have all of our back pages installed in our planner, the next thing we're gonna do is start filling them out. 
The last page I'm gonna fill out in my planner is ironically the first page in the planner and that's the level 10 life goals. Um, I want to transfer over any goals that I still have for this for next year that I don't accomplish this year and even though it's December I won't really know what I haven't accomplished until December until January 1st or maybe December 30th. Um, so I'm gonna hold off on doing this until last. Um, I'm also not going to fill in my inquiries page here or my photography workflow page here until January 1st because this is for new clients coming in. What I can do, however, is start on my marketing calendar and my outgoing advertising calendar. Um, basically, what I would do is I'll go into Facebook and see what am I paying each month per ad. Um, I generally spend at like 50 bucks a month per ad. Um, I don't have any being around on other sites. And let's see, we're going to say by the 31st of December. We'll say, hmm. Let's see, we average about, see this is, you get to see now running a business how this all works. So let's get a calculator out here, figure out the number on average I get per ad I run times 12 times the average sale. So we'll say gross return, let's say 14, zero, cool. This will go tie right into my marketing calendar over here, which I will, I was gonna say I'll come back to, but you know what, you, I might as well get started on it. So um, for those of you guys that don't know, I'm a photographer, as well as do, running this little small sticker and uh, planner empire on the side. So I have to figure out my marketing goals for the year. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by saying which my sub brands are. And I like to alternate colors when I do that so that it's a lot easier for me to see which goes with what. This is kind of a rough draft. I mean, I've got an idea of what I'm doing when I'm writing these out, but and I won't take you through the whole process here. I will do something similar in my smaller weekly for stickers. All right, so then what I do is I'm gonna go back through here and fill in all of the different brands and the uh, different uh, marketing that I'll be doing throughout the year. And I won't show you that, but I just kinda wanted to show you like how I'm gonna set that up, what the purpose of that is potential vendor partners as I go through the year and I see there's someone I want to work with, um, like an, another business that I would want to trade photography with. Maybe, for example, since we're talking about planners, like a planner cover company or a planner bookmark making company or a company that does accessories for planners. I might trade photography with them um, in exchange for a product to review for my website and my videos. If I came across a company that I wanted to have that kind of vendor marketing partnership with um, where I would say, okay, give me, let's say, a um, planner charm to review and in exchange for that I will give you some professional photography that you can use on your Etsy shop, right? I would list those people here. Auction tracker form, blog tracker form I can start setting up here for this, basically, um, what I'm putting in here are the months of the year that I will be tracking my blog statistics for. So, stats here with my different blogs, different Insta accounts, etc. And then I'll just go in here and put in my months. And then the last one is the average of those. And then we'll do the same thing over here. And we'll do the year average. Cool, that page is set up. Um, blog post brainstorms. 
Again, it, this is just photography related and I would go through my planner at the end of the year, any blog posts I didn't write that I had brainstormed, I would transfer over to here. Keywords and hashtags is another one where we want to set up our months for my headers. Let me change my pens here so I can make it a little fancier. So, one of the things I could have done, I could have had this done, just printed this one page out three times and then done flip up pages like I did with some of the trackers last year. I decided not to do that this year because I wanted to kind of have everything available at a glance. All right, here's this blank page that I had bookmarked earlier when I was initially putting the pages in, I said I was leaving it blank. Uh, I didn't know what to do with it. I still don't really know what I want to do with it. Um, I feel like I should leave, I kind of want to put in a mini um, right brain business plan here, but I also intend to put one of those in each of my dailies going forward. So what I'm instead going to do is just leave this blank because there's something I might want to use it for later. Submissions will be something I can start filling out when I start submitting things at so January 1st. Um, the wish list is something that I'm also going to wait on um, until after the holidays because maybe I'll get something during the holidays or maybe something will go on sale on the 26th. I don't know. But then that'll just get transferred over. Uh, medication and therapy tracker. This is one where I've got my stencils here and I'm going to hand draw in these trackers. Um, I definitely like to have some things that are hand drawn in. Um, so that's what I'm going to, that's my goal for this year is to do a little bit more hand drawing since I really do like to do artsy things and I just didn't do it last year. And I feel like each month I want to do a different drawing rather than have it like look the same for the entire year. Um, and you know what, the, the there I do run a risk of when I do that, of running out of space, but it's the risk I'm willing to take. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my color for January. My January color is kind of like a light blue, so we'll go with this kind of icy blue here. I'll just put that up here with the, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and, and draw in my tracker. I think for January, I usually like to do like snowflakes or something a little snowy, but I don't really have anything like that. So we're just gonna do like some, I think we'll just do some regular boxes. And then as you can see, I've got this stencil here that I got from Amazon. Um, if you go in the description, you can find the link to buy it. So I can do like hearts for February, that kind of thing. So for January, I think I'll do it to the side. No, we'll do it underneath. I think that's best 31 days so let's make it like a calendar I guess would be the best way to do it or no let's make it fit I like this idea better I'm gonna fit it around the word I really don't need to actually use my pencil on this I could totally use a pen on this one but I just want to make sure I have the right number of blocks you know what this one if you want if I really wanted the blocks to be like super neat and clean I could just create a grid um, but I really wanted to use my stencils and the hearts, when I do the hearts for February, won't be neat and clean either, so. Now, this this whole tracker, if you're going to do something like this, is going to change depending on what you're using it for. Um, if, like if you have a chronic illness or something where you may have multiple medications you need to take. I'm definitely going to put in a key at the bottom. Um, and then I can just kind of, I could measure it out basically and say, okay. Let's make sure I've got enough room. How much room did that January tracker take up? January tracker takes up about five. So do I have enough room? 10, boom, yep, I sure do, okay. So then that's where that will cut off. That cuts off and then right above where it says key is where the last one will cut off. Excellent. In fact, I might even just kind of draw in some lines here. Real lightly, I'm barely pressing down with the pressing it down with the pencil, rather. And I'm putting these in. And obviously, I'm not using the T square, I'm just kind of eyeballing them. Kind of see what I'm doing there. Right. And then I can go ahead and throw fill in my key. And then that will be my what are my first drug for the year. My first drug for the year will be my generic Wellbutrin. 
uh, which is spelled bupropion. And that's 150 times 2. Done. And then I'll just pick out whichever color I want to represent that. Um, let's grab one of my highlighters here. And I'm going to say, we'll start off with this blue-green color. And that will represent the bupropion. And this way I can keep track of my medications as I take them, did I take them, etc. I'll go back and ink that in. And then each month, this is February, March, etc., etc., all the way down the page. Okay, so that will be my medication and therapy tracker. Kind of, I'm not using the template right now because I really like the kind of hand drawn aesthetic to it. I think that as far as like a medication tracker goes, having this kind of hand drawn aesthetic is pretty cool. Makes it look more like kind of ice cubes, which was the look I was kind of going for when I picked a cube. And then I will trace my circles. And then I can just do a different shape for each month. February, I can do hearts. You know, April, do raindrops, that sort of thing. Uh, right next to my therapy, my medication and therapy tracker, I have my mood tracker, um, which I, which is basically the year in pixels, but with the mood tracker label on it. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill in my key for this. And then I'm just going to go ahead and, and then I'm just going to go ahead and color those in. So there's that. Um, create a live tracker, class tracker. I'm going to put on hold for just a second. We will come back to that before we come back to some of the other ones that we're going to come back to. Um, same thing with my CPP. We have our video brainstorming, which once again, anything from this year's planner that does it make it over here? We'll come back to blog posts, income from advertising, financial tracker. I can do right now, uh, mostly. <laughs> My goal is to have one credit card paid off by the end of this year, so it won't end up on here. But it's still good to have a due date, so I can just go ahead and open up my daily, and I can go and fill in all my financial details. And the rest I can put in on the first financial goals. This is based. This sheet here is based off of uh, Dave Ramsey's financial piece. So I got to my um, step one, which was the uh, one thousand dollars in savings, and have moved on to the next step. And the next step is basically I'm going to take these fixed monthly bills, except for my rent, and I'm just going to go ahead and put those into the other side here because I need to pay these off and I believe you if I'm correct me if I'm wrong you're supposed to put them in order from lowest or yeah lowest to highest and then pay them off in that order uh, that's what the bar at the top is is to or to show you how much of it you've paid off so then once I know what my totals are and I'm not going to show you guys what my outstanding debts are. You already know. You can already see where I'm spending way too much money at. I'm going to go ahead and list them from smallest to largest. The other thing I'll say is that it is not yet Christmas, so some of these totals may change based on the payments that I make in the near future um, before the 1st of January and the payments that I'm going to and the purchases that I still have to make. So that's the other reason I won't put the totals in right now. Now, you, it's hard to see, so you probably can't see it on the video, but there's ten t or nine tiny lines here making 10 divided boxes, which is 10%. Um, each little square is 10%, essentially, of this 100% total. Once I sit down on January 1st and I write in the current balances for all of my outstanding debts, I'll go in, divide them by 10, and write those across the top here. And then as I pay them off, I kind of just squiggle them in. So that hopefully by the end of the year, this will just be a, these will all be solid green bars and I'll have zero debts to pay down. Um, also, hopefully by then I will go through my three month emergency fund. Uh, what I will do here is at the top, I will write down what my, so what I'll do here is at the top here, I will write down my total for my uh, three months of um, emergency fund, which is rent plus all of those bills, plus food, utilities, those kinds of things. That number will go here, gets divided by 10, and then it just, we put the numbers in here in the jar, and then max out the Roth IRA contribution. My goal at that point, if I can get a three months emergency fund set up and pay off all my debts, my max, I'll figure out my max Roth IRA contribution. I think it's like five grand maybe? But I'm supposed to put 15% of gross or the max contribution in. I'll write down the annual 
max contribution divided by 10 and then just kind of go in from there. So that's how that worksheet will work out. Gifts given, gifts received. This is another one where I'm going to actually draw it in. This comes into two sections. The obviously given and received is essentially a gift idea chart. Um, last year I drew Christmas baubles on a Christmas tree and I think that's what I'm going to do again this year. So I have, yeah, I'm, I totally am nerdy. I have a protractor here. So I'm just going to go ahead, let's find our center for the circles that I'm going to do here. I think that's about right. I'm just going to draw in my Christmas tree baubles. Like so. And then one for over here. And then we'll do one down here. It's a little bit smaller. Maybe here? No. Do one here. And one right here. Work it, but what will work? And then that will become Jamie's presents and cat presents. So I'm a cat mama. And then my mom and then the mother-in-law. Right. And we'll just do in little do 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 do. Do, 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 do. Boop. Boop, 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 boop. Boop. That might actually need to be a little bit bigger. Okay. And then Jamie's is cut off. And then at the bottom, this will be my gifts received. And there'll be a little ribbon here. We'll see. Gifts received. All right, and then I just draw in my lovely little package ribbon here. person that still puts bows on packages? I don't friggin' know. Anyway, it'll look something like that. And then we will put item from right in here by the ribbon. Received. And then thank you. And then I'll make that look a little bit fancier. I will ink all of that in. It'll look real freaking cute. That's what we'll go there. Um, this page is for my charity's volunteer work. If I see a charity that I want to work with, it will go on this page. This is my menstrual tracker, which I call the red badge of menstruation because I'm a little bit of a literature nerd. And what I'm just going to do is, right, I already have, and you can buy this in my store actually, where it's preset with heavy, medium, light, spotting, all that good stuff. I'm just going to fill in my colors right now. If you're wondering, I do have the huge Tombow 100 and something marker set, and they do work really nicely on the sticker paper that I use for my stickers. However, I don't carry that whole set around with me and sometimes I take care of these kinds of things while I'm just kind of like hanging out somewhere like waiting for my breakfast um, at snooze or you know waiting for the members of my bowling team to show up or whatever. So I'll have my 20 color little tiny pen set with me but I won't necessarily have I won't necessarily have my whole big old Tombos with me so. We, that's why we do it this way. 
Um, I have this page here, which I'm going to turn into a TV tracker. So that is all set up and ready to go. Um, I know Chelsea has one in her store that's really cute, but it's just, for me, it just not how I'd like to set that up. So I'm going to make this my TV show tracker. I want to have a little bit more flexibility with mine to be able to check off the episodes as well as the seasons. Hers is just set up by season. So for example, I can go in here, I'm going to use two different thicknesses here. We'll put down show name and then we'll have network. So I know where the heck I'm looking for it. So I'm not looking for something on Hulu, you know, freaking on uh, my uh, Comcast or whatever. And then we'll make this either seasons or episodes. And I do that because if you're watching something like Game of Thrones, there's only eight seasons, but each season has a different number of episodes. So it's kind of hard to really figure out how much time do I need to dedicate to this thing. Whereas you can have, a, you know, a show like Doctor Who, which is usually pretty set on how many episodes are in a series. So that's how I'm going to set that up. Um, and I'm not going to put in my shows yet unless it's a show I haven't started at all. So like for, and also because I watch miniseries. So like if I want to put in the act that doesn't have seasons, that just has episodes. So we have seasons or episodes. My movies to watch tracker available in my store if you're interested in it. Um, you may not know that back in the day movies were shot on film and they look like this. But anyway, yeah, so something like Succession, which is like 10 episodes a season, I'll just do 10 across, next 10 across, and that's season two. Whereas something like, let's say, Deadly Women, which has 1 million episodes every season and has like 20 seasons, or like South Park, which goes between 14 to 10 episodes a season and is on its 23rd season, I can just list out my seasons. And I can just put a note on there that it's whatever season it is. Okay. So TV show tracker done. Um, books I read, books to read. Once again, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is take any books I didn't read this year. And <laughs> there's a lot of them. I didn't get around to doing a lot of reading this year. I'm going to put those over here. Uh, this is the one from Chelsea's store, by the way. And then the books I read, once I read a book here, I'm not just going to check it off. I'm also going to write it here and put it in on my shelf because books to read versus books read. Sometimes I don't want to read a book that's on my books read list. Sometimes I'm just, I'll shop my book sh shelf, so to speak. Um, and then once I've finished reading that, I'll put it in over here. So there's that. Um, travel bucket list I'm leaving as a mostly blank space because maybe I will print out a sticker of a place that I want to go, maybe I will write something in. It's kind of variable um, how I do this. So my travel bucket list is really just going to be kind of a bucket list. It'll be all over the place, kind of hodgepodgey by the end of the year once I have all my lists. And I might think about dividing it into in Colorado, outside Colorado, but maybe not. We'll see. I used to do it that way and then I had way more in the in Colorado than the outside Colorado. It was just weird. This is my places visited in 2020 list. Um, the only thing I'm going to fill in on this one is my key. It's probably pretty hard to see. Um, this is actually my map of the U.S., um, not the one from Chelsea's store. I filled in Colorado there and I'm just going to put home state. You know, I didn't really visit there, but I did not not visit there. And then there's two shades of gray here. Um, don't show up as well on here as they did on my computer screen. There's the darker gray that you can see Florida, Missouri, and Nevada here. Those were visited in 2020 or 2019, sorry. So once I have all of the pencil sketches in, then I will go ahead and draw in um, with pen all of my designs that I have sketched out so far in this video and fill in all of the text. Now, in case you were wondering, um, for the Tombos, yes, they actually do have a downloadable tracker on the Tombow website. So if you wanted, you could just download their tracker and color it in. What I've found doing that in the past, however, is that because their tracker is, or because their markers are water soluble, sometimes an inkjet printer's ink will run when you run over it with a Tombow marker. So depending on the paper that you're using and a few other different factors, I just found it easier 
to make my own. Also this way, I can rearrange it so that it goes according to a color palette that makes sense to me, um, whereas they put some colors in weird places together that I don't really understand. I put this Tombow tracker in the back of my planner so that if I use the Tombows for color coding, I can always look back and see, oh, that's what it looks like on this piece of this paper, which is the other reason I don't tend to use sticker paper when I'm doing this tracker. Because sometimes sticker paper can cause a really weird cast, and then it doesn't look like the color it actually is when you put it on the paper. Just a suggestion. This would also be a spot that would be good for a pen test page. In fact, in last year's planner, that's exactly what I used this for, was this page, the back of this page was my pen test page. The other thing I don't like about the Tombow tracker that you can print yourself is that the text on it is so light that when you color in to the tracker, it's hard to see what it actually says. So it looks like a really pretty pinwheel. But, you know, you're not going to really see what you've got going on there. So that's why I just make my own in the back, which with the dot grid pages is really simple to make, especially when the grid lines up so perfectly with the box. Uh, this is my cleaning schedule that I do every year. And basically it's based on a something you can find on Pinterest, essentially. I hand draw it in. I keep meaning to make it for the Etsy store, but that just never seems to work out for me. So it's a good way for me to track my daily, weekly, um, bi-weekly, monthly, bi-monthly, and um, semi-annual and annual cleaning tasks. Uh, once I get it filled in, what I'll do is I will every week go in and make sure to copy over my weekly tasks into my planner. Now that I have the Passion Planner daily, I can also go ahead and go through there and take the daily tasks and make sure they end up in the daily planner. Then once a week, I have it on my weekly to go in and check my back pages. And I'll go in and make sure I color in the tasks that I did. Um, the little squares equate to either the weekly or the biweekly or the monthly. So I'll just go in and make sure I get the week or the month colored in, in that month's um, coordinating color. So that way, you, I can go through at the end of the year and see, okay, I totally missed this week or this task on this month and I need to go back and do that. Or, oh yeah, that's why my apartment's a total disaster because I skipped the monthly tasks for a month and a half, maybe two months. You know, life happens. So that's this page. Um, as always, I would totally recommend, since you're going to be coloring in over top of these, to make sure you're using the waterproof markers. I'm using the Micron um, PACMA markers, which are just fabulous for that. Also, um, recommend that you, if you're going to use the Tombows like that, use those last. If you put the Tombows down first, you might get some bleed because they take a little bit longer to dry than the Microns do. So, the Create 52 page is a page that is based on uh, Lindsay Adler's uh, 52 Create uh, book that's available. There's a project a week for photographers to do, but I think it would translate fine to any kind of visual artist if you're, you know, drawing, painting, whatever. Um, I like to do this on these little film strips that I created for myself. And then each week as I complete one, I will color it in in the appropriate color coding. So again, I can look back at the end of the year and see, oh, I completed these this month. Not too much to fill in on the books to read and other pages until I know what books I haven't read this year. I decided to do this as a watercolor spread last year. I intended to draw it in and I just got overwhelmed at the idea of drawing in all the pine needles and doing all the back work, work for it and shading. So I decided this year to just watercolor it in, which was a little bit faster. Um, I masked everything off with some really crappy washi tape, the Heidi Swappy or whatever her name is you know what I'm talking about that washi tape sucks it tears all the time I never use it for anything except masking off for before I do watercolors at this point um, if you watch my other watercolor videos you know that I usually recommend clipping down but for this one because I was in kind of a rush and wasn't going to overwork the paper on it because I'm just doing a real quick design I decided to just tape it down so I actually used that while I was masking off 
I used that tape to also tape it to the pages underneath to prevent the pages from buckling up. And then I just made sure to be a little bit lighter on the water than I usually would. Um, and then I just did layers. So I made sure that all, each layer was dry before I went and put another layer on top. It does make it a little less watercolory, so to speak. But as you can see, I can then go in and put water over top of that if I want to blend something else. You can even use like the blending brush from Tombow to go ahead and help with that. And also, as you can see here, the lines were a hot mess when I sketched this out because when I go ahead and paint or color something in, the lines are just there for a guide. They're not really there to be followed exactly. So, And then I'm just using a gel pen in here to fill in my letters because I like it to be blue and sparkly. And we have to clean up, of course. The education trackers are something that I've done for... Four years now. That was one of the first back pages I ever did on a passion planner um, was filling in my education tracker. This is something I intend to do a separate video on at some point, but essentially this will help me keep track of getting my certification. In this case, my certified professional photographer certification. Um, I just kind of fill in the images I need to create as part of the certification process. I put in that section here and then I'll just go ahead after I've got that section detailed out and write in what kind of images I have to produce as part of that uh, certification process. Um, for the certified professional, there's uh, the mandatory ones at the top, then you have nine client images, and then your choice of, I think, nine different categories. There's only four that I'd actually be interested in, so that's all I put in there. Um, the next thing I did was put in my required reading. Once again, if you're doing this for like a college class, this would be something where in that image category at the bottom, I would put in, you know, the paper I have to write and what the metrics were for that. For this section, I'd put in my required textbooks. And then after I have my reading section done, I would just put in the syllabus because that's essentially what I'm doing. Um, when I'm filling this uh, certified professional photographer tracker out. These are all of the metrics that I'm actually going to be tested on when I go to take my certification test. And so what I can do then is set up a notebook where the heading for each page or each chapter in the notebook will be one of these metrics that I have to learn. And then as I'm viewing my videos or reading my books, the notes will be sectioned out into those topics once I feel like I'm really competent on that particular topic, I'll go in here and like fill in the little square next to it to check off that I feel confident, competent in that topic. And like I said, this is actually, I started doing this for my college classes when I was in college. And then I just, when I did my um, certification with Parsons for fashion, I copied this exact method and it makes life so much easier when you can see at a glance what you need to know, what projects you have to do and where you are on the project, like what part have you done. And also when you have your required reading there, so you know what you're doing. And you can even expand like your required reading more the way that I'm going to expand it with the videos. So over on the other page here, I'm gonna mark off all the videos that I wanna watch uh, that will be helpful for me to get the certification. In this case, uh, they're creative live classes. Each video is broken into segments. And so what I'm going to do is list out the video and then do a block for each of the segments that I'm going to be watching. As I watch a segment, I can color it in. And then when I have watched the entire video, I'll just highlight over the name of the entire video. You can do this with the required reading. Uh, put down the name of the book and then either the individual chapters or if it's not like a college textbook that has 50 chapters. It's one of those weird ones that's like 10 chapters, but then like 10 categories in each chapter. You could do like chapter one and then all of the individual subheadings for it, like, you know, section one, two, three, four, etc. And then once again, just color it in as you learn it. And that just makes it easier to learn when everything is in front of you. You know what's expected of you. And if you get through all that required reading and all those required videos and you're missing some of the metrics, you know what you need to like go on the internet and learn about like on your own. What, is, what independent learning do I need? Oh, well, it says here I'm supposed to learn uh, color theory. I didn't have a video on color theory, so I better go learn my ass some color theory on my own. 
Now, I don't want to just watch videos this year that are only pertaining to my continuing education. So this is my Creative Live Tracker. I subscribe to Creative Live every year. Um, and there's a link in the description that'll help get you, I think, either $10 off or 10% off um, a Creative Live subscription. Regardless, I like to make sure that I know what classes I've RSVP'd to. And once again, how many units are in each class that I've RSVP'd to. Or in this case, um, which videos I have purchased and how many of uh, the individual lessons are in each video. As I watch them, I can color them in and check them off. Um, it's kind of weird. You'll see my cell phone in the video because some of them, as I purchase them, I'll track them in last year's. And then at some point, I just go, oh my gosh, I have to have that class. And so I purchased the class and then don't actually, I didn't actually log it last year. So I had them all on my phone. So that's why me scrolling through going, okay, what didn't make it into last year's planner? So, and then once you get into the planning itself, I just go through and number all my pages uh, or all my classes individually. Uh, if you ever were like, why do I need to know my times tables? When is that going to come in handy? Numbering a load of classes like this, knowing your times tables is super helpful. So you can just go down there. Oh, um, I get eight classes across here and I have 81 total. So I need nine rows. Boom, done. And you can just keep on flowing like that. And when I'm initially putting the classes in, uh, if you'll notice I put class one and then I put the last number class. So I know exactly how many little blocks I need to fill in later. And then I just fill them in real quick and erase all my lines and all my mistakes. So. And that's how you set up your passion planner for 2020. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please make sure to click the subscribe button in the upper left hand corner of your screen. Also, please make sure to leave a comment. Let me know what videos you want to see in 2020. And if there's any questions you have, please let me know. Also, remember to subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram at ERW underscore plans and visit me at ERWplans.com. Thanks so much, you guys, for watching. See you next year.